Hello everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the ABAP interview question answer series. Today we are going to discuss about what is log and what is log object in SAP data dictionary. So log is nothing but a locking uh, mechanism like so actually with the help of log we can maintain the integrity and consistency in the database okay so for that purpose actually we use the log concept okay and log object it is a nothing but it's a technical object through which we can achieve the locking mechanism fine so how we can create the lock object so to create the lock object uh, we have the transaction sc11 there we can go and we can create the lock object okay when we create the lock object this can be another important interview question when we create the lock object is there any function module gets generated after activation of the lock object okay so your answer should be yes your answer should be yes what are the function module gets generated so there are two types of function module gets generated okay there are two types of function module gets generated after activation of the lock object one is the nq function module and another is the dq function module okay nq function module so the name is going to be a start with something like nq uh, and the name of the lock object over here will be there for that particular function module so this is the naming convention okay nq and another function module which we are having that is nothing but the dq function module so it's a dq function module so maybe uh, some spelling mistake it seems nq a n q e is it like this so need to check this spelling but uh, uh, this nq function module and the dq function module so the two function module gets created this time trying to correct the spelling yeah it seems fine the spelling is correct now so in q underscore lock object and dq underscore lock object the two function module gets created when we create the lock object do we have to follow some certain naming convention okay one another interview question can be like uh, when we are going to create the lock object what naming convention we have to follow when we are going to create the lock object what naming convention we need to follow so generally when we create the custom object it's going to start with z or y right but when we are going to create the custom lock object it must be started with e z or e y so this is one important point it must be started with e z or e y okay so this is the naming convention uh so answer maybe we can write like this name must be started with ej or ey 
fine now what are the different types of locks so uh, we are having mainly four types of lock one is the read lock or it is also known as the shared locks the second one is the write lock or exclusive lock okay this is also known as exclusive and cumulative lock so cumulative addition is by default if someone is telling a write lock the meaning of that means it's exclusive and cumulative so if i simply tell exclusive lock that means it's exclusive and cumulative we have already seen in the detail how the cumulative works right exclusive and cumulative lock works so all these things we have seen in our above course in detail here just for interview purpose because we are looking so let's have in a summarized way the third one what we are having is the exclusive but not cumulative lock and the fourth one we we are having optimistic lock okay opti mystic lock the representation of shared lock or read lock is s and here exclusive lock or cumulative lock is e right and here the exclusive but not cumulative is x and the optimistic lock it's going to be the, this is the representation of this and this parameter when we are going to uh, put the lock this parameter actually will have to pass it over there in the function module which will decide what kind of lock we are going to apply let us see what is this read lock and shared lock read lock or shared lock is nothing but if uh, like uh, uh, two people will be able to access the same data at the same time access in the sense two people can read the data at the same time and one people suppose started you know if uh, i am reading the data and you are also reading the data and if i try to edit the data i won't be allowed to edit the data okay so that's the meaning of shared lock so if shared lock is applied two person can read the data but another person like any one of the person will not be able to edit the data that's what we have written at the same time two or more than two people can read the data if someone else is trying to change the data then he will not be able to change because some has already put the read lock that's the meaning of read lock what is write lock write lock is nothing but uh like suppose uh, i'm suppose i'm uh, trying to change the data so uh, i will be able to change the data but the another people if they will be also trying to change the data at the same time he will not be able to you know change the data that's the basic meaning of write lock okay here in the same session you can apply the write lock by the same user multiple times okay by the same user in the same session this write lock can be applied in the multiple time this we have demonstrated in our uh, uh, in our course right so just remind that one correct i remember that one the same thing we have written over here if one person is trying to change the record in a table then the another person won't be able to change the record in the table right by the same user and same person within the same session lock can be applied multiple times now exclusive but not cumulative it is same as the write lock but you know even in the same session the same people will not be able to put the lock again and again that's the only basic difference what is this optimistic lock the optimistic lock over here is that you know two people will be able to read the data together same like read lock or shared lock but here the people will be like uh, one people the two people is there right so one of the people will be able to change the data and as soon as one of the people is going to change the data another people like uh, the, that lock this o lock gets converted into the exclusive lock this e lock exclusive and cumulative lock and hence the you know the remaining people will not be able to change the data so what actually i'm trying to tell it over here that suppose we have two or three people over here they are working on the same table let's suppose they are working on the same table so uh, maybe we can consider this as a table right so 
in this table in this table if this is the table okay uh, let me take the correct one it's coming automatically like this I don't want to get this arrow okay let's assume this is a table I'm not able to remove this arrow from this side okay let's assume this is my table okay assume that this is our table and these two uh, these all these three people is uh, reading the data over here one of the people like in the read lock none of the people will uh, go into the change mode but in the optimistic lock some like this people any one of the people is trying to change the data system will allow to change the data but as soon as he will go into the change mode this optimistic lock will be converted into the exclusive write lock that optimistic will lock will be converted into the exclusive lock and hence the remaining people right this people is starting changing the data and because the lock is now converted into the exclusive lock the remaining people will not be able to change the data so that's the meaning of optimistic lock so the lock part we have seen okay so today we will stop here only and in the tomorrow session uh, we will see that okay this this seems to be the uh, just let me read it out what are the function modules gets generated when a lock object gets activated just we have discussed it over here two function module gets generated right so the same question uh, okay one one more question is over here related with lock let's complete this one and then we will wind up our session of today's uh, and what are the differences between them so in queue lock is like the two function module gets generated just we have seen one is the in queue function module and another is the uh, DQ right one is the in queue and another is the DQ so actually in queue function module is used in queue function module is used to lock the entry in the table okay so this is the purpose to lock the entries in the table and when we talk about the DQ function module okay when we talk about the DQ function module so DQ function module is used to release the lock if you don't release the lock after the session automatically lock gets released after the program session automatically lock gets released so to release the lock okay to release the lock from the entry from the table entries so this is the use of DQ function module and this is the use of NQ function module okay so hope it's uh, clear over here now what we have discussed so it's always better practice to like if you have some big program it's always better practice to you know uh, always better practice to use the DQ okay use a, a DQ however automatically it gets released but suppose if you have a, a bigger program in that case right it's a better to use the uh, when when our work gets completed just after completing the work just after the modification like when when we use this in queue function module we use the in queue function module when uh, we have to modify some records right then generally we use if it is required okay so there are many things uh, inside this to understand in detail but these are the summarized way from the interview point of uh, uh, from interview perspective this is the question generally being asked okay fine then let's stop over here and we we'll meet tomorrow with the new questions and answer okay fine then bye bye take care have a nice day